This is the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air, the latest Mac from Apple, and this might be the best MacBook money can buy. Not only is it the smallest, most portable MacBook available, but it also makes very few sacrifices in performance. And using it for the past week, it's got me wondering, are we at a point now where it just makes more sense to get the MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro? Today, I wanna go over why that might be the case and dive into what my experience has been like so far, what's new with the M3 Air, the tests and the work that I've done and going over how much you can truly get out of this machine. So if you're in the market for a new MacBook or you're just curious to know what the new M3 Air has to offer, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Out of all the new MacBooks that have been released since the M-Series chips showed up in them, the Air lineup has been the one that I've had the most time with. I used the recently retired M1 Air for full-time software development for a year, a RIP to that iconic wedge design, but I also used the 13-inch M2 version when I switched to doing creative work full-time, and I always found the Air to be more than capable for almost anything. The last time that I used one of these as my primary machine was about a year ago. I've since tested out a bunch of different Macs, including the M3 Pro MacBook Pro that's been my main Mac for the last five months or so. And now getting my hands on the new M3 Air, I remember how much I love this design and the changes in the M3 version are impressive. Looks wise, it's identical to the M2 variant. The same exact dimensions and weight, same color choices, but the M3 variant does differ a little bit in that it has this new anodization seal to reduce fingerprints, which I do find does show less on this midnight version that I have here, but it still does show smudges and streaks somewhat easily, which is quite similar to the Space Black MacBook Pro in that regard. I forgot just how light and thin the 13 inch Air is compared to the 14 inch Pro models. It's about 0.8 pounds lighter and 4.2 millimeters thinner, which might not seem like much, but that is between 25 and 27% smaller, and it's definitely noticeable. It makes the air feel a little bit more portable, but one thing that you do have to be careful of is with vertical stands if you have this at a desk. A bunch of these stands don't accommodate for how thin this is, but lucky for me, the one that I use with my Pro has changeable inserts that fits really well. I'll link that below because it can be a pain to find something that works. That's really the only thing that I've had to look out for, and otherwise, if I'm out and about or if I'm traveling at all, I much prefer to carry around the Air versus the Pro. Part of what allows the Air to be so thin is the fact that you've only got two USB-C ports on the left side of the machine and a headphone jack on the other. So no full-sized HDMI or SD card slot or anything, which I'm honestly fine with. Even on my MacBook Pro, I rarely ever connect anything outside of two USB-C ports. I usually just have one for my Thunderbolt dock and the other for my studio display. And you do have MagSafe available in the event that you're using both ports and they don't have power delivery. So it still leaves you room to charge. Those ports still have Thunderbolt and USB 4 specs, but the big difference in the M3 over the M2 is that it will now support two external displays, where previously it would only support one. That does come with kind of a gotcha though, as it'll only work in clamshell mode. So essentially you're just sacrificing the laptop display for a larger screen. Regardless, if you're someone who likes to have dual monitors in a desk setup, it's nice to have a little more flexibility. Speaking of the screen, this hasn't changed at all and is still the same great 13.6 inch liquid retina display with 500 nits peak brightness. The color looks outstanding and it's great for any color critical work or just for viewing content. I've mentioned this before, but the difference in brightness in SDR content versus the Pro models is only 100 nits, which is barely noticeable with them side by side. Almost all the content that we view in macOS is in SDR. So while you do get a higher refresh rate, slightly deeper blacks and better contrast on the mini LED displays in the Pro models, the air still looks great. For an IPS panel without any local dimming, it has very deep blacks and the measured contrast is just under 1500 to one, which is fantastic. The only thing that I'll say with this 13 inch model is that with any apps where you've got a lot of panels open at once, so pretty much any video editing software, Xcode, Blender, those kind of apps, if all you're gonna use is the display on the laptop, it's probably gonna feel pretty cramped. So you may wanna upgrade to the 15 inch error if that is the case. Regardless, if I do happen to be editing videos on here, I can trust that what I'm gonna see on the screen is gonna look similar to other Apple devices like iPhones or iPads, which is what you wanna see. And speaking of video editing, that really leads into what's probably the most important aspect of this machine, the performance. This particular version that I have here has the M3 chip with an eight core CPU and 10 core GPU. 
has 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, which is the exact same configuration I had in my 13 inch M2 Air. And I gotta say, I don't know how many people need much more than this. First of all, if all you're doing is basic productivity work using office software, you can get by on a lot less than this. You're never gonna feel any slowness with that kind of stuff, but beyond that, there's not a lot that you can't do with the M3 Air. In my own testing with synthetic benchmarks, I see about a 19% improvement in single core performance and 21% in multi-core over the M2 Air, with Xcode benchmark running about 20 seconds faster as well. In real world use, if you're actually sitting down coding on this machine, everything feels super snappy and just working on mobile and web projects doesn't really feel any different from my Pro. The M3 Pro does compile things marginally faster. If you're working on a huge project that takes an absurd amount of time to build, you will probably notice the performance difference there more, but I rarely ever notice any perceivable slowness with the air over the M3 Pro. One thing I will say is that if you start taxing that CPU, it does get fairly warm, which has been par for the course on these airs ever since they went with a fanless design. If I run a 100% load on the CPU, the temperature gets between about 102 and 105 degrees Celsius, which will throttle performance, but I find you have to have a lot going on for it to stay that warm. For the most part, with anything heavily CPU based, this thing is going to have no trouble with it at all, and even the M2 Air didn't really have many issues in that regard but the GPU is probably the biggest upgrade that you're gonna find on this Mac over the previous generation. I've talked about this with my M3 Pro a little, but the M3 series chips this year saw the introduction of hardware-enabled ray tracing and dynamic caching, and provided you're using apps that are optimized to take advantage of it, you're gonna see some pretty huge leaps in performance. This M3 chip actually beats the M2 Pro in GPU benchmarks, where there's about a 15% increase in Cinebench 2024 scores, with about three times higher scores than the M2 Air, and feels surprisingly performant in anything graphics related. In Blender, I can open up and work on a simple project, and things feel very smooth, and render times are much faster than the M2 Air. The M3 ran just under three minutes faster on the Monster Under the Bed demo, which is wild, but it is still quite a bit slower than the M3 Pro that beat the M3 by just under a minute. Even with those gains in performance, you're still not going to be able to throw together a super complex scene with a boatload of assets. The M3 Pro will get you a little bit further, but I still think that you need a much more powerful machine for any heavy lifting, but if all you're doing is learning, or like I said, working on simple projects as a hobby or for fun, the M3 Air will do you just fine. When it comes to gaming, anything in the Apple Arcade is going to run completely fine on here. Most of those titles aren't overly demanding and are made for mobile, so no surprise there, but even games like No Man's Sky, Rust, and Resident Evil 4, everything is very smooth with acceptable frame rates, at least acceptable for a MacBook. I more so just tested that out because it seems like a lot of folks were curious about gaming, but where the GPU is going to make the biggest difference for me personally is with creative apps that I use every day. For me, that's mostly Lightroom, the Affinity Suite, and Final Cut Pro. I edited last week's video on this machine and had zero issues with anything there. Granted, there wasn't a ton of effects or anything like that. I'm usually just working in a timeline with 4K H265 video, where occasionally I'll have the odd resource heavy plugin dropped in, but for the most part, it's quite similar to my M3 Pro for making these videos. The air does warm up on me a little bit, but even when I've got this all running through my studio display at 5K resolution, things are still pretty snappy, and render times are usually identical to the M3 Pro, as this has the exact same encoding and decoding engines. The only time where I see that drop down lower than the M3 Pro is when I start doing other resource-heavy stuff, where the heat rises and it'll start to throttle, but honestly I think any of these M-series machines are great for video editing, provided you're not doing anything too crazy. If you have huge raw files, you're using After Effects a lot, or you have a bunch of SFX, you're probably going to feel this bogged down, but I think in all likelihood, for the majority of folks, the M3 Air is more than enough. That being said, I know how easy it can be to get hung up in specs with these machines. Just looking at the difference between each chip, it looks like there's a pretty big disparity between them, when in reality, you're likely never going to notice. The M3 Air has 100 GB per second memory bandwidth, which is down from 150 in the M3 Pro and 3 or 400 in the M3 Max. I've never heard of this being a bottleneck, and for context, even the best PC builds are below 100, so the M3 still has a crazy amount of bandwidth. Similarly, the speeds on this 512 gig SSD are the same as the M2 Air and are much slower than the M3 Pro drive, but 
I've never actually noticed a perceivable difference in most uses with any modern Mac SSD speeds. I'm sure there are some edge cases where it'll make a difference, but I wouldn't be overly concerned about it. On the flip side to that, one feature I think doesn't get enough attention is to do with wireless connectivity. The M3 Air got bumped up from Wi-Fi 6 to 6E and provided you have a fast internet connection and Wi-Fi 6E capable router, there's a pretty dramatic increase in network speed. On my one gigabit connection, I get almost 900 megabits per second download speed, which is about two to 300 megabits per second faster than regular Wi-Fi 6. And for many of us, our network speed is probably the bottleneck that affects us the most, so any big gains that we can get there can have a huge impact on productivity. Even more impactful for most of us is gonna be the battery life, and like the rest of the Mac lineup, this is outstanding. Apple says you're gonna get up to 18 hours of battery life on the M3 Air, just like all the other MacBooks, and in my own tests, I've been super impressed. I charged this machine on Sunday afternoon, and with a combination of web browsing, listening to music, watching content, and running benchmarks and renders, I made it through two full days of use and didn't have to charge it until Tuesday afternoon. Just be aware that if you do run your system at full throttle, it's not gonna last nearly as long. I'd say probably in the neighborhood of around half a day or so, max. But if you're using it normally with software development, any kind of creative workflows, or things where you're pushing the M3 chip a little bit without going all out, you'll get a full day out of this no problem. Like I do with most of my Macs that show up on the channel, I will be using this as my primary machine for at least the next month or two, so I'm gonna follow up with a long-term review on this, but so far I've been super impressed with the M3 Air. It does everything that I needed to from coding to productivity and more creative workflows, and honestly, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of sense to get the MacBook Pro over the air for most people. The base M3 version is gonna perform relatively the same given it is the same chip, and even the M3 Pro variant only sees perceivable gains in very specific areas. Given the Air is a whopping $500 cheaper than the M3 Pro MacBook and $300 less than the MacBook Pro with the exact same configuration, I think the Air has a better overall value, and if it were me, I'd probably just use the extra savings to put towards a nice Thunderbolt dock or some accessories to address some of the Air's shortcomings. I know you don't get all the same features like the expanded port selection and the ProMotion screen, but for me using these interchangeably over the last week, I don't know that I notice it enough for that to be a deal breaker, and I much prefer the size and portability of the Air over the other stuff. I'm gonna follow up with this video with more of a direct one-on-one -on -one comparison between the Air and the Pro, where I'll try and highlight more of the differences between these two, including some of the stuff that wasn't mentioned, like sound and mic quality, so stay tuned for that. But I am curious to know, do you guys place a lot of value in anything that's in the Pro or the Air that would make you sway one way or another? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you wanna see more tech-related content or start a YouTube series where smartphones go on blind dates, based on their specs and features, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.